Here we go. Okay, I actually stole some of this from the iNaturalist website, so I'm gonna give them credit. When you record this as uh, AT, you're gonna record it as CTMN presentations other than chapter meetings, and it should be about one hour. When I first got started with iNaturalist, I was so excited. Um, I took the same training that you guys took, and I got um, just you know a very little taste of it. And this is one of the first pictures I took at my yard as a red-shouldered hawk. And I didn't know what it was, and I naturally told me I was so excited. And we went to the orchard, and I got this white-eyed vireo, which was really cool. Um, I was at my daughter's house, and this little guy hit the basketball court. Uh, the what's it called? The backboard stunned itself and I picked it up and, and we just got to hold it until it revived and was able to fly off. We were at my mother-in-law's house and saw this osprey. My son had this Virginia creeper sphinx at his house. He's like, Ma, what is this? I said, I don't know. Let's find out. I love the camo color. At my sister's house, we saw this giant walking stick. And of course, I had to pick it up and take its picture. And there's one of my favorite pictures of all time, my golden cheek warbler that I got at Fort Hood. All right, if you haven't already, you need to have iNaturalist on your uh, mobile device or you can use a camera and you need to create an account. I think most of you have already done that at this point. All right, if you are a new student, a new trainee, we've already been over some of this. It's gonna be review. Uh, for the old timers, this is review, but from a long time ago. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna go how to observe, make observations. When you take pictures, make sure that the subject is not too small, not too far away. Try and make sure it's in focus. That's not always easy, especially with a moving creature. If it's safe, hold it in your hand. I have a picture of a little slight red, red eared slider that I held in my hand. And you saw the hummingbird. Um, but I would not pick up a tarantula or, you know, a wasp, something like that, a rattlesnake. Also, make sure that if you're taking a picture of an insect or something that is on a plant, that you make note in the comments that your focus is on the bug, not the plant, so that it's clear what the subject of your picture is. These are some of my pictures that I have uh, actually taken and submitted to iNaturalist. And these are not the best pictures at all. Um, from the upper left-hand corner, this was taken out the car window. There's a lot of different things. You can kind of tell what that is. Um, then that beautiful buzzard sitting there in the middle at the top is almost not even in the picture. Um, to the right is a deer behind all that wood and trees and stuff. It actually has been identified. Um, people are good enough to be able to look at that awful picture and identify it. Then at the bottom in the middle, there's a picture of my dog's leg and three different flowers and who knows what the subject is supposed to be. Then the bottom uh, left, it's really out of focus. It's a purple cone flower, but it's so out of focus, it's hard to really tell. 
and it only has the flower. It doesn't have the stem and the leaves and the back of the leaves, those kinds of things. All right, so especially for plants, take more than one picture if you possibly can and get it from different angles. Um, because like I said, with that purple cone flower, it didn't have any leaves, it didn't have the stem. Um, if it's an insect, maybe get it from the front, the back, if possible, the underside. Uh, and those that will help identify your organism. Here's some pictures of some pink ladies that I took. And on the left there, I'm showing the back side of the leaf. And then I'm holding it up the pink lady so you can see the stem and the leaves and the flower and then on the right it's just the pink ladies in the in their own natural habitat all right so i took this picture of this organism this plant out in my yard in my uh, uh, bed out there but I did not plant this plant. So the question is, is it wild or is it captive cultivated? Now, according to iNaturalist, if I did not plant this and it came up in my garden, it is still wild. If you did plant it, it is captive cultivated. It's important that iNaturalists know whether it's captive cultivated or wild because a lot of their research is on wild organisms. All right, paying attention to the metadata. What is metadata? That is the date and time and location stamp that is part of your picture when you take it with a lot of different devices. For example, your phone or an iPad and some cameras also have those kinds of things. Um, you need to check to make sure the correct time zone is set on your device and make sure that the location is turned on. Otherwise, you'll have to set the correct time and date and location yourself manually. All right pictures with iNaturalist, the app itself. If you're using the app itself to take pictures, you don't have to go back later and edit your observation, but you can go back and edit if you need to. You can immediately get some idea of what that species is that you took a picture of. Uh, for example, you can, you can maybe tell that it's a lady beetle or something like that. Um, and it's great when you're out doing just casual things and you come across a cool animal or plant and you wanna know what it is. Um, the negatives about taking pictures with iNaturalist is that when you take the picture, you're gonna want to take a moment and uh, fill in the fields of what you think it might be, the time, the date, in the location so you don't have to go back and do that later. And it's a lot quicker to get a picture of something just, you know, you look up in the sky and there's this big bird flying and you wanna know what it is. So you, it's easy to just get out iNaturalist and take the picture and figure it out. If you prefer, you can take pictures with your phone or your camera and then upload those to iNaturalist later. Um, so it's, it's gonna be uh, whichever one is more convenient for you. The pros of doing this is you can just take a bunch of pictures where you are and sort it out later and not have to be uploading and putting in what you think it is and, and all that. Just make sure that you have the metadata turned on. Um, so for example, it's great for a bio blitz or you just happen to have your camera and you get this picture of the eagle and then you want to upload it later to iNaturalist. Um, 
That way also, if you have a really good camera, you can use the camera to get the fast moving animal or the zoom that's a lot better than on your phone, those kinds of things. Um, however, if you wanna know immediately what it is that you're you know, identifying, it won't give you that, it's just on your phone. Um, and it's quicker to get to other camera uh, for bugs and animals, etc. cetera. Um, you'll have to go back though and upload your pictures to iNaturalist and possibly put in the date, time, and location. So you're gonna figure out which way is best for you. All right, if you have an iPhone, this is for you. In your iPhone, it will uh, there will be an observe button in your iNaturalist app and you'll click on it. Then, if you can see my cursor, you will add, you'll hit the plus to add sounds or pictures. Then, if you take the picture uh, or if you upload the picture, the next thing is, what did you see? When you click on it, it's gonna come up with a list of suggestions of what iNaturalist thinks it is. If it doesn't look like there's something there that really matches, you can put in a placeholder. Frog, for example. This looks like a frog, I guess. Um, or you can choose one of the ones that you see in the list and just click on it. Um, sometimes they'll say, we're not certain exactly what this is, but we believe it's in this genus. And you can just choose that genus if you want and let somebody else tell you what it is. Number four, when you saw it should automatically be added. That's in that metadata I talked about. And where you saw it should automatically be added. Um, Geo privacy, I think you've seen before. Open is for most observations, but if there's something that's of uh, great, uh, for example, a species that's endangered, you might wanna set the geo privacy to um, obscured. And that way it won't show exactly where the creature was, but it will allow the people of a project to find out where it was. Captive or cultivated, you're gonna to wanna to mark if it's something that is like your dog, the chicken that you have in the backyard, the rose bush plant that's growing in your garden, those kinds of things. And then projects, can be, uh, you can join projects, but for example, we're having a bio blitz coming up at Mother Neff State Park. If you are there during that time and you add observations, it'll automatically be added to that project. Okay, and when you're finished, you hit upload. Later, you're gonna come back and see what comments anybody in the community has made, they may have made suggestions as to what that particular species was, what that creature was. All right, same thing for, for an Android, except that it's gonna start with a little plus, which exists down here on your phone. Uh, otherwise, you click on the plus to add the picture. You decide, you know, click on this. What did you see? Oh, it was a frog. I saw it here. It should automatically go on uh, on this date. All of this is the same. Um, but instead of like on the iPhone, you're going to click on the check mark up here to save your observation. With Android, you're gonna click on sync one observation to actually upload it. Now, if you are someplace where you don't have Wi-Fi and you don't wanna use your cell data, you can actually turn off automatic sync 
and wait until you get home and you have your Wi-Fi and you sync the observation, all of your observations at the same time. All right, this is how it looks from my phone. I have an Android, so if you're on an iPhone, sorry. Down at the bottom is the plus, and I click on plus, and you can see it pops up, no media, take photo, choose image, record sound, or choose sound. Now, if you're um, observing a bird and you hear the bird call, you can record that bird call and not have a picture, and it will identify by the sound, by the bird call. If you have a picture already on your phone, you can choose that, or you can take a picture. All right, so I made an observation right here. It, you can see it a little bit better here. Um, and then I clicked on what did you see? And it said house mouse, black rat, brown rat, Carolina wren, southern flannel moth, house sparrow. It is a baby chick that I watched get hatched at my daughter's house. So it is none of the above. So I clicked on, uh, I just typed in domestic chicken. And it will pull up a picture of a domestic chicken. And you can actually click on compare uh, to see if that's exactly what you want. Or if you know that's what you want, you press select. It fills in the day, the place, the visibility, captive or cultivated. I'm going to click captive or cultivated oops sorry i went too fast and click check all right here's another one it's that uh hyacinth from my garden that i did not plant and i've uh, clicked captive or cultivated and click check um if i wanted another picture of the same thing I can click up here on the camera image to add another view so that they're all combined into one observation. Okay. Also, you can check on the uh, projects. Um, you can see that we have a training nature challenge that's going on. Uh, anybody can join it. But this is add to projects down here. If you have, uh, for example, I took a picture of a golden cheek warbler and it automatically got added to Birds of Texas. Okay. Um, when I click on the three lines up at the top left, it gives me my menu, and under this, you can go to settings, and this is where you check whether you want it to automatically upload, auto sync or not, if you want it to suggest the species name, etc. cetera. Um, if you, you can switch that back and forth. For example, if, you're, if you know you're gonna be in the field and there's not going to be any Wi-Fi, um, you might want to wait and upload them all at once. If I'm taking pictures with my camera, I might make an observation with my phone without a photo and add the photo later and all the comments just so that it will pull in that metadata so I don't have to figure out where was I when I took this picture. And in the comments, I might put what I think it was. All right, if you click on the three lines, you get uh, the menu to join a project. Oh, I went too fast again, sorry. Let me go back. All right, you're gonna uh, click on three lines. If you're on an iPhone, you click more 
in the lower right hand corner. And then you choose projects. You can uh, click on the magnifying glass up here and type in the name of the project that you're looking for. Click nearby, featured. This is a list of projects that I have joined. Um, and then you click on the one that you want to join and you click join. Okay, I started typing CTMN to find uh, the nature challenge. All right, I would like you to take just five minutes and try and take a picture of something. It's raining outside, so I have this picture that I pulled up. It's not a great picture, but see if it's your dog, if it's a plant that you have in your living room, it doesn't matter. Just take a picture and try and um, post it. To, just to iNaturalist, not to any project. Just take the picture and upload it. Unmute and let me know how, if you have any questions or if there's any problems. You can use a picture that's already on your phone if you have one. Just because this is still being recorded, I'm going to keep talking a little bit. I don't know how many people can still hear me. This little squirrel was at Dinosaur Valley State Park at our campsite, and it was very curious and uh, very friendly. And my son-in-law was at the campsite next door and somebody left a jar of peanut butter out at their campsite and the lid was not secure. So this little squirrel managed to get up on the table and open the peanut butter jar and eat the peanut butter out of the jar. I'm not going to see it. I just want to make sure you can do it. Uh, there is a place, Carol, to, to mark whether it's dead or alive. I haven't seen it on the app, but it is on the uh, desktop. Let me see if I can find that for you. Because we, ha I have taken pictures of dead creatures for a variety of reasons. It's important to do that. Text dot wants to know what creatures die on the road sometimes so that they know if they need to do something about it. I'm pulling up a picture of my squirrel. I'm pressing the edit button. Nope. Maybe under notes, Carol, you could put that it was dead and later somebody can fix that. There's not a way on the app to do it. Uh, you click on the picture and delete. Uh, 
Oh, it's already, you can still edit it and go back in and delete the picture. I'm going to share my phone with you guys. It's got my um, iNaturalist app on it. Can you see my phone? So if I click on the picture, and click on the edit button. I can click on the picture and then down at the bottom is a delete. So you, uh, little trash can, so you can delete. I don't know what it's like on the iPhone. Linda, I have a question. Sure. Um, I have just started taking my, remembering to take my iPhone out with me when I go outside to work in the garden. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll, I don't see anything that's not moving fast. And I was wondering if there a trick to actually getting a bee in a flower uh, with a iPhone photo, or does it just take practice? It just takes practice. Okay. Um, yeah. Enlarge it, like zoom in on it so you're not too close, that kind of thing. Okay. I'm just not quick enough yet to actually achieve that. You will. Okay. I know you will. All right. Linda. Yes. Jamie. Hi. I took some photos on my camera. I've created a deck directory to store the pictures in to add them later. Using uh, the iNet on the PC, I can't find a place where to add photos. I will show you that. Okay. I will, I will show you that. There is definitely a way to do that. All right. Is everybody finished taking at least one picture of something? No, I, I kind of got knocked out for a while because of thunder, so. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I went missing. Let me know if you need to recover anything with you individually later. I'll be happy to. Okay. I think I'm okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to continue on. So, Linda, it's Andrea. Um, I had questions about selecting a project. Um, some of the pictures I okay. take don't automatically go to a project. Okay, so from a project. Uh, if there's two, there's several ways you can set up a project. One is if you are in the right place at the right time, it automatically pulls the observation into the project. For example, say I'm at Mother Neff and during the bio blitz, and I take a picture and it pulls it in. Uh, it should automatically upload to my project, Mother Neff BioBlitz. If it doesn't, it's because the location circle that you have is outside of the park boundaries partially. Mm -hmm. And so you may have to actually uh, decrease the size of that location circle so that it's inside the park boundaries. Okay. If it's not a project where um, it automatically adds, you will have to join the project. For example, uh, my husband's working on Adopt-A-Loop, 
and it, in order for us to contribute observations, you have to join the project. Um, the trainees had to join the trainee nature challenge in order to uh, add their observations. But once they did, their projects, their observations automatically get pulled in. Does that answer your question? Andrea? There, sorry. Um, I had taken a picture of a plant that was, um, I tried to add it to a project. And it says that submitter must be curator of this project. Does that mean that that's just somebody's private project that I can see in a list? But it, it yes. is that what that means? Okay. Yes. I'll keep looking for other projects for it then. Okay. Thanks. Uh huh. All right. Back to my squirrel. If you are on your computer, you go to inaturalist.org and you log in and then I wonder if I can make this go away on my thing anyway I'm seeing too much uh, stuff on my screen sorry y'all all right from your computer you're going to uh, add an observation and you can actually from this point it's going to ask you where you're pulling the observation from um, no I'm telling you wrong this is if you already have an observation up you edit the observation with all the information that we already did um, and then you would submit this circle is where it was viewed and you can expand and retract the circle, reposition the marker so that it makes it uh, more precise. Okay, so this is a picture of what my iNaturalist looks like. If I want to upload a picture, I would click on upload here. And if I want to uh, go to explore or community, all these items are available right there. But to add an, an observation, you click on upload from your home page. Then you can choose files here or drag and drop photos and sounds. And you have more import options. This is where Jamie, you would have your um, SD card plugged into your computer and you could, um, you know, just find those observations on your camera and pull them in or you can drag and drop them. Okay, so I added this picture of this primrose. Then I'm going to click on what is it, and it's going to suggest primrose. It's going to say the date, the time, the location, all of this that you're supposed to have, and then you submit observation. The cool thing about doing it on your computer is you can upload many pictures all at one time and uh, edit them one at a time. So this is uh, a list of my observations here. And I've got this these grackles um, right here. And I want to maybe edit my observation. So I'm going to click on the picture of the grackles. To get to your observations, you click on your observations. It not only tells you what you've observed, but where you observed things. So 
So here's my picture of my grackle, and I've got actually four different pictures here. And I'm going to click on Edit up here. Once I do that, I can click on this and change what I think I saw. I can reorder the pictures. Say one of those pictures is uh, better than the rest, and I want it to be the first one because that's the one that will pop up when people look at it. I can add sounds. You can uh, zoom in and put where it is. Um, you can choose more pictures to add by choose photos. Here is three different pictures that I've pulled in and I have selected this one. And by selecting this one, I can edit the species name, but I don't have a location for any of these. So I can select all right here and it will highlight all of them. They were all taken at the same place. Then I can say, oh, I saw this at Fort Hood. It will pull it up and I can move my circle around. I can move my dot around until I find where I took it and I can expand and contract my circle to make it um, more accurate. All right, so there's all of them. I put in my location, bloop, it fills it all in. So if you took 142 observations, it will put the location in for all 142. All right, now identify, you're gonna click on species name. Uh, it said, we're pretty sure that this is a finch Euphonia's allies, and the first two suggestions were house finch and purple finch. I always check to see if it says seen nearby. If it's not seen nearby, I'm going to want to compare it to see if maybe this is the one I'm choosing is something that's only found in South America, which I've done before. I've clicked on something that is only found in South America, and um, found out later that I was wrong. So I pulled in these three pictures of a fox and they're three separate observations, but I want to combine them all into one because they were all taken at the same time, at the same place, uh, and it should be one observation. So you click on select all, and then you click combine. It's that easy. No, you can't do that on your phone. When you're identifying observations, uh, remember the taxon, you've got the genus and the species and all those other, I don't remember all of them, but you're going to identify the best that you can as far up the ladder as you can. If you don't know the species, it's okay to go down and say, well, this is a tree. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but it's a tree. Um, if you say something that is not species, it could be leading. If somebody agrees with you, it's improving. Um, supporting is yours is the same as somebody else's. If you get two people agreeing on the species, then it is research grade. All right, so what if you don't agree? If you're looking at yours or somebody else's, don't just simply agree with an ID that somebody else made unless you know that it's true, because that just um, helps things move along to research grade erroneously and gives false data. If you disagree, the best thing to do is make a comment and the reason for your disagreement. Now, I know some people that are in our chapter that are really good with bugs or amphibians or trees or plants or birds, and that's their forte. If they told me that the bird that I'm looking at is uh, 
a golden eagle that's for my husband um then i will believe them absolutely so not only do we make observations with iNaturalist, we also need to help other people identify their observations because uh, it's a community project. If you're not good at identifying, just do the ones you know you can. I get in there sometimes and all I can identify are the, you know, uh, mockingbirds and the northern cardinals. That's fine. That that's important and needed especially during like a city nature challenge when there's so many observations that need to be identified so what you do is you click identify at the top of your computer page you can set your filters and click go now if you don't set your filters you're going to be observing anybody's observation in the entire world so this is my uh, iNaturalist, and I clicked on Identify, and up came everything in the world. And I might just want to do Texas or Bell County, or I might want to go to filters and just review birds. Um, or I might take a look across here. Oh, yes, I know definitely that's an Arctic wood rush. No, I don't. but just say I do. I'm going to click agree. And you can look through the page that's on there and just agree with the ones you know are correct. I know this is a wax wing of some kind. I don't know that it's bohemian. Uh, so I might click on it and agree that it's a wax wing. All right, I've typed in Bell County. And it brings up a list. Did you know there's a Bell County U.S. in Kentucky? Uh, I'm going to click on the Texas one, and it will bring up Bell County observations. Then I can decide if I want to do birds, uh, mammals, here's fish, uh, plants, spiders, all kinds of things. And it, if you hover over it, it tells you what that is. Um, you can choose to identify uh, only sounds or things that are captive, things that are threatened. Um, you can have an exact date range that you want to uh, identify. You can um, come down and under project, click the type in the name of the project that you want to identify, etc. This is under more filters, by the way. All right, so I'm identifying. I click on a picture. It comes up with sunflowers, daisies, asters, and allies. This is the picture. And I know for sure that this is a, I don't know what it is, but blue-eyed grass, let's say. I know it's not, but I would click on add ID, and I would type in blue-eyed grass. All right, so we're going to do some practice identification, and we're going to do this from uh, my computer. I'm going to start sharing my iNaturalist. So you guys can go ahead and unmute if you want. Uh, I'm looking for... my Google Chrome. It's this one. All right. So here we are. I have actually gone in and done a search for um, the items that are in our trainee nature challenge. Yay. So here's a picture. Oh, is it not sharing? Not yet. Sorry. Let me try and stop sharing and go again. It's um, it just told me that sharing is not responding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. 
Okay. It's just going around and around. Are there any questions up till now? On the identification process, do you have to do that on your computer or can it be done on the mobile app? I'm not finding. We lock it. Uh oh, now Linda's stuck. John, barely. Can you see that Linda is in Never Neverland? Linda's on her way back. Sorry about that. Getting back to iNaturalist. Here we go. All right. Now can you see it? Okay, good. So yeah. this is uh, one of the observations that was made by one of our trainees. And if I click on it, it will actually do a uh, close up and I can move around and, and see what this is, maybe. Does anybody have an idea of what this may be? Cat mint. Say that again, please. Cat mint. Spell it, please. C A T. M I N T. I don't have the genus in there. Yeah. Okay. So, with is every, it, is it this one right here? Uh, could be. Okay. We can. An we can click on view. And it takes us to another page where it shows an example of cat mints. I don't think that's the right one. I think it may be the one below that, the Nepeta. Okay. The one that was below that one. It's, see, this is a gray or green species. See the garden cat mint, that one? See, okay. Open this one up and see. So we click view and it comes up with this. Yeah, I agree. All right, so, so we're going to choose the garden cat mint and we're when it says, tell us why, because Marianne said so. Because we have two people who said so. <laughs> right. Gray green leaves. And click save. All right, and then we can X out of this and go to the next observation. Um, this is one I'm interested in. I want to know if this really is a fork-tailed Katie did. This is really cool. There's two different pictures. Does anybody know enough that I can agree or disagree that this is a fork-tailed bush Katie did? Okay, nobody's speaking up. So I don't feel confident on my own to agree, so I'm going to leave it alone. But we'll go to this one. There are three different pictures.
Salvia RCI. Where is it growing? <clears throat> Where is it growing? It appears to be growing in a flower bed. It, what did you it, call it, Marianne? I I called it Salvia darcii, but can you uh, can you get a closer look at the leaves? Yes. Yeah, I, that's what I'm going to say. It is darcii. Except I think the second name has changed. That is definitely a salvia, and I know it is Darcy. Darcy, yeah, Darcy. There you go. Mary, Mary Ann knows all the really good names, and I know some of these, but this is what it's called an ID. Can you get um, and save? Can you get credit for? identifying other people's observations for uh, ma master naturalists. Yes. This is very important that we go in and identify things. So if you are good at identifying some species, we need you to go in and, and do that. Also, um, coming up is that uh, bio blitz at Mother Neff and uh, Jean is uh, hoping to have somebody there on the weekends for a couple hours in the morning, couple hours in the afternoon to help visitors figure out how to use iNaturalist. You have used it. You can help somebody figure out how to use it. Um, if you're willing to just donate a couple hours, you get more than just the eight hours of doing the bio blitz, you get extra time for volunteering there at Mother Neff State Park. So I would really encourage all of you to try and make it out to Mother Neff. If not, at least get out and identify some things. According to um, state, if it's in your yard, we can't take uh, you credit for hours that are spent identifying items in your yard. I would say that if your yard consists of 35 acres, <laughs> that that's probably just the yard part around your house. And if you get out, absolutely, whatever's in the outside acreage. They want us to uh, focus on items of greatest conservation need but um, if we're doing this for a project, you are welcome to spend time on this. And um, it's very valuable work. It's, uh, it helps all of the different areas of those uh, you know, organisms with um, making sure that they're taken care of. Uh, for example, for state parks to make sure that visitors know what they can find out there, all kinds of things. So, are there any questions? Did I go too fast? No. No. Okay. No. Great. If anybody gets out there and says, oh, I don't remember what we did, Give me a call. I will walk you through it. I'm happy to help you with it. All right. That is the end of the presentation. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Linda, what was the name of that insect that was on that yellow flower? What what did you say it was? Some kind of Katie did. Mm. If you are try if you are on your computer and you want to identify something, you click on identify. If you are on your phone, you can also identify things on your phone. 
Jean, do you have any more to say about Mother Neff since you're on here? I just realized you're on here. All right. Thank you, everybody. Just email Jean if you're interested. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.